Welcome to Ritter Cares. I'm Michael McConnell, and I'm a reference associate here at the Ritter Public Library. In this installment of Ritter Cares series, we'll be speaking with Lauren Kaszczyk. She is the Executive Director of the Lorain County Office on Aging. Lorain County Office on Aging provides support and resources to the roughly 70,000 older adults living in Lorain County. Their mission is to improve the health, well-being, and independence of aging individuals and other adults with special needs. Uh, today, we'll be discussing isolation. According to the CDC, roughly a quarter of adults age 65 and older are considered socially isolated. So this is one of the major issues that adults start to face as we get older. But this issue has been amplified over the last year due to the ongoing pandemic. The signs and symptoms of isolation are often overlooked. So we are hoping to provide some information and resources our patrons can use to address these issues. Uh, Lauren, do you wanna tell us a little bit more about yourself and then we can talk a little bit about isolation? Sure, sure. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this today. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Lauren Kishazik. I am, like he said, the executive director of the Lorain County Office on Aging. I have been in this role for almost three years. I have been at this agency for almost 10, so I have quite a bit of experience here in this arena. Lifelong Lorain County resident, wife and mother of two little ornery boys. So, so that, that is me. My life is older adults and then kids when I get home. So I have an interesting... Uh, interesting spectrum there. All right. Well, great. Um, so do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about isolation then? Yeah, um, social isolation is has been a growing issue um, for older adults for some time now. Um, even, you know, back around 2015-16, we even unfortunately saw a spike in, in suicide attempts and completions among older adults age 60 and older. Primarily older white men were the ones that tended to complete suicide. So that was definitely a concern. But now with, with COVID, it's, it's a completely different layer to this. So, you know, social isolation, it, it, it impacts your mental health, but it also impacts your physical health. You know, if you're feeling isolated, oftentimes you're not seeking treatment maybe for your diabetes or for your, your heart conditions, your chronic pain conditions. Um, so, so that feeling of isolation kind of it, it's like almost like a depressive symptom. And you know, when someone is, is depressed, oftentimes they, some of their self-care is not there. So it definitely has far ranging implications as far as your health and your well being when you are socially isolated. And I'd also like to kind of mention, there's a thing called geographic isolation as well. And here in Lorain County, we have an interesting intersection of um, rural, urban and suburban. And particularly in our rural communities, you know, the geographic isolation is another layer in, into this. So that, that is something else that we pay close attention to. Okay. All right. And then, I mean, obviously you mentioned suicide. Um, you know, what are some of the other health risks associated with isolation? Well, I mean, you know, health risks wise, you know, obviously depression, anxiety, and depression and anxiety have a lot of, of negative effects on, like I said, your diabetes care, you know, your your ability to to deal with, with daily issues, um, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling left out, you feel like you don't have anybody to lean on. Um, I hear this a lot from our clients, well, I don't want to burden anybody. I don't want to burden anybody. And, and I always kind of just want to roll my eyes and just go, no, it's, it's not burdening. These are people that love you. These are people that want to help take, you know, help you. You know, we've had a concern about, you know, people being isolated, especially during COVID. I mean, COVID has just added a whole yeah. new element to this but we're concerned about people not seeing their doctors. You know, you're, you're isolated, you're afraid to go out maybe, or maybe you have transportation difficulties, you're afraid to drive or whatever it might be, you've got to see your doctor. You've got to keep up on, on your, your appointments. If you're a diabetic, you have heart conditions, lung conditions, you've got to stay up on your appointments because if you don't, then it's, it's just gonna snowball and, and the health, health concerns and health risks are just gonna become much worse. So for you know, friends and family, you know, what are some of the early warning signs? I would say um, obviously depressed mood, you know, if they seemed disengaged, if they're withdrawing, you know, if, if you call them and they don't call you back, you know, that, that's something that, oh, maybe they're busy or whatever. That, that's, that's a warning sign. That is definitely a warning sign. You call your, your mom or your dad and it's like a couple days before they call you back or when they do, they're very disinterested, very withdrawn um, you know, irritable, you know, you're kind of looking at, at depressive symptoms as well, because those kind of are very similar, 
you know, if they're irritable, oh, I'm fine, or they, they don't want to hear about it, or they don't want to talk, um, sleeping more. So if you're calling mom at 10 a.m. and she's like, oh, I was still in bed, you know, that could potentially be a warning sign or sleeping less, you know, if, if they're up all hours of the night and maybe they're trying to take a nap in the afternoon, you know, those are all the kind of things you want to look, look for, loss of interest, you know, things they once enjoyed, you know, maybe seeing their grandkids, maybe quilting, whatever it might be. You know, those are kinds of things you want to look out for. So obviously it can be difficult for someone to be aware of these symptoms in, in themselves, but, you know, if someone becomes aware of these symptoms or if you're a friend or family member, you know, what are the sort of things that adults who are feeling isolated or showing the signs of isolation, what can they do to, you know, feel less isolated or, you know, avoid these feelings of depression? Well, during the time of COVID, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, there are seniors, there's local senior centers, you know, um, even though they're not meeting right now, they are still very active with calling their participants. I would strongly encourage, you know, anybody that's interested in a senior center, give us a call because we, we know the areas, we can give you the phone number, we can give you the information, um, you know, and even just give us a call if you're feeling very isolated, you know, we can connect you to, to people that can help. And there, there are, you know, phone numbers that you can call. There's even text lines now if someone's into texting. So, you know, reach out, you know, if you're starting to feel isolated or if you're a family member that you're, you're seeing this in your loved one, reach out, go, go over there. Even if you do a social distance where you stand outside, check yeah. on, you know, mm -hmm. kind of push it. Sometimes you got to push it a little bit. I can speak from personal experience. You know, my father experienced some of this, obviously pre COVID. Sometimes you got to push it a little bit, um, reach out. And if, if you're feeling this way, if you're feeling isolated, reach out. You have family, loved ones, neighbors. If you don't have that Call, call your local senior center, call your local office on aging, reach out. That is, I can't say that, reach out to your doctor. Talk to the, if you have a nurse at your doctor's office, you really like, call them, reach out. I, that is, I just can't say that enough. Yeah. Don't, don't suffer. You don't have to, mm -hmm. there is help. And I, I assume like for the friends and family who are trying to reach out, it can probably be difficult at some point too, because someone who's feeling isolated may not exactly be accepting yeah. initially of, because if yeah. they're feeling depressed and stuff, they're going to be not and exactly always, being, yeah. The family can always call us and get some advice. We can, okay. we can mm -hmm. give them some advice on the phone about, you know, maybe some steps they need to take. And so mm -hmm. always just call us, we're here. Yeah. And then, um, so what about adults who are feeling isolated? It's not just, uh, individuals living on their own, right? It can also be married couples. It can be adults living in senior Absolutely. centers with. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we're seeing that right now in the nursing homes with COVID. You know, I, I know that um, Ursula McElroy, who was the director of the Ohio Department of Aging, she had a very difficult decision to make because, you know, we, we closed visitation to nursing homes and assisted livings. And it was horrible. I mean, you see these videos of, of loved ones having to visit through the window. And it's as heartbreaking to see. So on one hand, you have the health risk of them contracting COVID, but on the other hand, you have the health risk of them being isolated and lonely and deteriorating faster. So, so we're seeing that live in front of our faces. So even people that live in a congregate setting, even people that, I mean, have you ever been in a group, a room full of people and felt totally alone? it doesn't stop, you know, you can feel that way. You can be in a room with 20 people and you feel totally alone. So that doesn't stop. So no, I mean, you don't have to be living alone by yourself to, to feel isolated and to need to reach out. And, you know, with us resuming nursing home visitation, hopefully that will help. But, you know, with their cases rising, I hope we're able to continue that because we are definitely seeing adverse consequences of you know, these people not being able to see their loved ones, you know, we're definitely seeing very, very sad situations, so. Um, well, I wish I touched on several resources throughout. Um, is there, um, you know, we're gonna actually provide a lot of these resources and links. So, you know, we'll put your phone number and a link to your website, um, you know, and then you mentioned some, you know, they can call senior centers and stuff. Are there other resources that we can provide for our patrons? Absolutely. So, you know, there's the local crisis hotline that I can give that. 
and it is 1-800-888-6161. That phone number is 24 seven. Okay. And they okay. also have a warm line that is operates more of in the afternoon and evenings. But this number is 24 seven. If you're feeling isolated, lonely, you're concerned about harming yourself or call this number. Um, if you text, again, you can text the crisis hotline, text for hope, the number four, the word hope to 741741, 24-7. 24-7, okay. someone okay. will answer yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And then NAMI has a hotline that is 800-950-6264. And that's Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. So there are resources out there any time of day to reach out if, if you're feeling feeling like you need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, great. Thank you so much for your time. Um, like I said, we'll provide the link uh, for our patrons and um, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. All right, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm.